What great timing. Your dad was just getting ready to die. It's about time I finish things up anyway. It's now or never. Kaienzan! Watch closely now. I'm going to crush him until there's nothing left. What a shame. It seems that he's already lost consciousness. No way! What is up guys, Blackscape here, and today we have the answer to a question that none of us really knew we had. And that's a question that is given to us by Dragon Ball Sparking Zero, and we have the answer for today. Because the question was, what if Goku transformed into a Super Saiyan early. That was the question that the trailer showed us as one of the brand new what ifs that the game has to offer. And this question is one that I never actually thought of, but it is a very interesting. What would happen if Goku transformed into a Super Saiyan early on? What would be the outcome after that? How much of the story would change and how would this affect the future of Dragon Ball going forward. Well, after watching that trailer, we all had that same question, and I am happy to say that today we finally have the answer. And as always, huge shout out to the Black Squad. Thank you guys so much for being here, supporting the channel, loving the content. You guys are awesome here every single day, liking and commenting. You guys are amazing. Let's go ahead and jump in. First and foremost, the beginning of this video, I showed you guys exactly the moment that this sort of transformation would have happened because this is where the what if hints at the situation being made and that is with Krillin's death to Vegeta's hands. Did you think I wouldn't realize there was another one of you here? You seem to enjoy worthless sentimentality. I knew there was no way this kid would come back alone. <laughs> I was surprised you knew about our tales though. Too bad for you. Just wait, once I'm finished with Kakarot, you're next. This is what Krillin says at this moment after failing his attack. He says, damn what a freak. Even as a monster, he's still level headed and on guard. I'm sorry Goku, I don't want to just stand by and watch you die, but this guy's just too much, I can't even get close. He acknowledges that Vegeta was on his guard, Vegeta saying that he was paying attention, and so any attack that would have came from Krillin would have been an unsuccessful attack to begin with, but what if that wasn't the case? Because there isn't that much difference between what Vegeta's doing here with tormenting Goku and leaving them alive, and actually attacking in retaliation to Krillin's attack. So in the what if, Krillin fails the attack, and then Vegeta blasts him with probably not even his strongest energy attack, and this is enough to destroy Krillin right there and then. This is where the what if begins, because as soon as that happens, Goku realizes that his friend is gone again, and then he has the same moment he had against Frieza on Namek. The exact same thing, the exact same Saiyan transformation, transforming into a Super Saiyan right before our eyes. Now, the only difference between this and the what if that we got in Sparking Zero is that in the what if we got from Sparking Zero, he is not being held by Vegeta, and I couldn't find the exact scenario in the manga where he wouldn't be being held by Vegeta and Krillin would die because Krillin's death would definitely come at this moment after attacking Vegeta who is on guard and watching so this is what happens after that when Goku transforms into a Super Saiyan he actually singes and damages Vegeta's hands both his hands are damaged I'm not saying they're broken or anything like that I'm just saying that they are burned they're burned from the Super Saiyan transformation and the power that is emitted with that transformation that there's no way Ozaru Vegeta would be ready for once Goku transforms after the death of Krillin this quickly becomes Dragon Ball superhero with Gohan versus Cell Max it becomes the exact same thing Goku too strong and powerful to really let up his punches on Uzaru Vegeta and Vegeta still at this point being way too damaged to even be able to handle even the minimum effort from Goku he would be rocked just like Cell Max was against Beast Gohan and this would cause either A for Vegeta to be knocked out in his Uzaru form and be left there like Uzaru or probably the more 
the more obvious take and the probably the more realistic take is that Goku, after beating on Vegeta for a little bit, he cuts his tail himself knowing that that is the way to stop the transformation, leaving Vegeta way worse than he was at the end of this arc. Vegeta in this state is literally left like he was after getting hit with the spirit bomb. Remember, after he turns back into Vegeta, after Yajirobe's slice, he fights Gohan and Krillin for a little bit longer before getting hit by the spirit bomb. So I think he'd be far worse damaged than he was even after the spirit bomb. So more likely he would be immobilized and crawling back to his ship. And honestly, I don't see Goku ending Vegeta here. Goku had restraint against Frieza after transforming and battling him and everything that happened. So I would imagine that he would have the exact same here with Vegeta, especially after he pardoned Vegeta at the end of this arc and stopped Krillin from killing him. So he would probably let Vegeta go, same as before, and then revert back to base and more likely pass out or be knocked out from all his excessive energy and wounds, and everything like that, and go to the hospital, similar to what he did in the anime but more likely for a shorter period of time because of the fact that he is a Super Saiyan now. While Vegeta, on the other hand, would leave knowing exactly what just happened, that he got defeated by the legendary Super Saiyan and the fact that he knows what the legendary Super Saiyan looks like. He knows how to become a legendary Super Saiyan and he just has way more information going into the Name arc than he did beforehand. So more than likely Vegeta would go and try to find out how to transform into a Super Saiyan and have the exact same thing happen to him. So this means to me that Vegeta would not be in the Namek arc at all. He would not go so self-confident to Namek to face off against Frieza because he thought he was a Super Saiyan because he's already seen what the Super Saiyan actually looks like. So he knows that's that he's not it. He knows that there is still that transformation to gain, so more than likely he would go training similar to what he did after Namek and in between that and the Android Saga to try to become a Super Saiyan on his own. Once Goku lands on planet Namek with Gohan and Krillin, because I don't see them leaving him behind, I see that Goku is going to recover a lot faster after becoming a Super Saiyan than he did originally in the Saiyan arc. He would go with both of them. He would make short work of whatever Frieza Force Warrior comes against him. He would make short work of the Ginyu Force, Frieza, who has heard about a Saiyan who's glowing yellow that is on the planet and has taken out the Ginyu Force. Frieza, who has no ability to be able to sense Ki on his own, that Frieza, I believe, would more than likely go straight for Goku to try to end him. Goku wanting to go straight for Frieza, knowing that this is the boss on the planet, and then Goku easily, easily defeating Frieza, and I could see Goku letting Frieza go into his final form, even beyond that, but still easily defeating Frieza, and I would imagine that Frieza would probably do the exact same thing, try to destroy Planet Namek, same exact way, and Goku would have to wish everybody off the planet, and then himself as well, he would have to take the Frieza Force ship to go to planet Earth, and then Frieza would be in the exact same spot he was in at the end of the Namek arc, going into the Android arc. A lot of things change up until this point, I believe, but I think anything in the Android arc, it stays the same. Frieza comes back to planet Earth to act retribution on the Earthlings, and then Goku shows up in like the original timeline and defeats Frieza. So those things still remain the same. The only difference is that Vegeta, we don't know if he returns to Earth, looks out, looks for Goku at all, or even transforms into a Super Saiyan on his own. I feel like he would still be out in the universe, still training on his own. So with that being said, without him meeting Bulma on Namek and living with Bulma on Earth, there is no Trunks to come back in time to warn anybody about the androids. So we literally would get the original timeline from the Trunks saga, but without Trunks because Goku would still die to the heart virus and everybody would still die to the androids. That's as far as this what if gets in my book, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section below if you have something different. It's going to be Blackscape signing off. Take care guys. Subscribe for more content.